Let's review Versa SD-WAN technology. The device group is a group of one or many actual CP devices that share a common configuration or a list of templates associated with them. One device group can have one device template but many service templates. In a device template, we define common options for similar devices such as VLAN, WAN and LAN interfaces, and whether they're static or DHCP, as well as a couple of other parameters. This is done so that only specific information to a branch needs to be configured during the onboarding process. With service templates, we can define more granular pieces of parameters and configurations for things like NG Firewall, UTM, Application Services, QoS, traffic steering that can be shared across multiple device groups. Service templates can be mixed or matched with different device templates. In talking about Zerial Touch provisioning, when a new device connects for the first time to the network, it will receive an IP address through DHCP. By default, FlexVNF will contact the call home server over a secure IPsec connection and inform it that this is a new device and this is its serial number. The Versa Global Pre-Staging Server will then inform the device where it needs to connect to next. The device will receive an initial configuration and the connection details of how to connect to the head end and controller of the organization or customer it belongs to. FlexVNF then establishes an IPsec tunnel to the appropriate head end controller, downloads its final configuration that's been defined in the device group which it has been associated to. Now, let's see what the initial steps are to enable a FlexVNF device to be onboarded to the SD-WAN network. First, we create a device template. To do this, we define the template name, the organization it belongs to, where it's going to log data, its SD-WAN controller or controllers, and its software subscription level. Next, we need to define the interfaces and their purpose. For example, here, two WAN interfaces, one for MPLS, one is going to be for internet, and we're going to set one interface to be for the LAN. Then we need to define what kind of configuration those ports will have. That's it. And then now the device template is now created. So now we need to actually create the actual device and the configuration that will be used on the, based off the newly created device template. So here we need to provide the serial number of the device, a name of the device, its organization that it belongs to, and the, a device group to which we're going to the map the device template that we just created in the previous screens. So now we need, then need to define the device's location information. And finally, we're going to fill in the variables defined in the device template. So here, we're going to define the device IP for the LAN interface, its MPLS interface, and then define the gateway address across its MPLS interface. And so once we're done, we're now ready to connect the device to the network and have it be onboarded using Global ZTP. Now, we're going to create an application service template where we're going to configure parameters to guarantee a specific traffic steering behavior. So first we create the template and then we give it a name. And now here, for example, we're going to find that for voice traffic, no matter the source or destination, voice over IP should always choose the path to the lowest latency, delay variation, and lowest packet loss. Next, we're going to find that for recreational internet traffic, such as social media, that internet will be the primary path and that we're going to fail over to MPLS if internet is unavailable. Now, we're going to find that for Office 365 traffic, we prefer the internet, and we're going to also fail over to MPLS. As you can see in the template, you can enable things like FEC or replication based off the application, and you have various other specific parameters um, you can also define in the template as well. Now, for Oracle ERP and other Oracle applications, we're going to set MPLS to be primary path, and then we're going to have it set to be failover to internet if MPLS is unavailable. App ID is done utilizing our DPI engine, and you can actually create more granular traffic steering profiles utilizing custom forwarding profiles and SLA profiles. Now you click deploy, and the service template can now be defined to a device or a device group. Now let's look at how to configure versus security features and policies. So we support things based off of device templates or service templates, and that's how we configure our security features. Here in the networking tab, we can configure protection profiles and the DNS proxy based features. 
In the zone protection profiles, you can configure protection for general flood traffic, port and IP scans, and any traffic anomaly. For DNX proxy, you can also, as you see here, is configured for Flex VNF. We have five different rules. Internal domains, where internal traffic goes to internal DNS server. We also have a DNS sinkhole policy, and we have a policy set for guest traffic to always utilize Google DNS. And then a cloud domain policy, where we enable policy-based forwarding according to Flex VNF's configured SD-WAN application traffic policies. Next, under services, where we have denial of service, authentication, decryption, and security policies and profiles. And here we have a guest traffic denial of service policy to help prevent someone connecting to the guest network and flooding it with a, a denial of service attack that's going to impact the branch. Now we're going to go to authentication policies and profiles where we have four different policies and profiles based on specific applications. And here we can actually enable specific types of authentication based on the app. So using like Kerberos, Active Directory, SAML for single sign-on, or actually utilize the Flex VNF's local database. And then once they're authenticated, we can actually apply specific user group policies. Now we're going to show decryption policies, and we're going to show you two rules. First, the first rule is all financial and healthcare services will not be decrypted. And the second policy and rule is going to have everything else encrypted, where we then apply a prof profile to use versus SSL proxy. And that SSL proxy can either be a forward or a full proxy and actually support transparent or explicit modes. Additionally, as you'll see here, Flex VNF can be configured to be a web proxy where we can actually have where we actually have proxy chaining configured. And here for the proxy chain, we actually have two different rules based on application and traffic type. So the first rule is Office 365 will break out locally, and rule two is they're going to have all corporate apps will utilize the proxy within the corporate environment. Now, for our security policy and profiles, we can define a policy based off a of zone, IP address information headers and schedule, layer seven match condition based off of application and URL category, and also user group um, profiles or uh, uh, policies. Once we have our, once we have a match, we can then apply some enforcement actions where we can enable logging, packet capture, access control, and threat prevention parameters. And for threat prevention parameters, you can set it to IP, file, URL, DNS filtering, antivirus, IDS, and IPS with specific profiles of their own. And then once the profiles are configured and applied to Flex VNF, as you're going to see here, we can then monitor the traffic and see how it's being processed by Flex VNF actually in real time. So Versa also provides historical analytics, whether it's for SD-WAN and security, and you can view the data related to application, URL categories, bandwidth utilization, and threats at the site, device, and org levels. And then each specific category can then be viewed either at a high level or drilled down to enable deeper visibility, deeper visibility to see more details. In Versa Analytics, we have specific views for application, web traffic, firewall, as well as threats. And then within the analytic views for threats, we provide insights on the web, IP malware, vulnerability, denial of service, and then an overall summary on a per site and tenant basis. And then we also provide detailed logs that give greater insights in the user device and application context. With Versa Analytics, you can also generate various reports on services, SD-WAN, security, traffic, or monitoring. And you can get reports like top applications over the last 30 days, top threats, as well as a variety of other reports. Admins can actually export them either manually right from the dashboard or have it set to be scheduled to be emailed periodically either from Versa Director or Versa Analyst. Now here we have VN, uh, Flex VNF configured to do device fingerprinting based on MAC address as well as utilizing a radius server for .1x and then utilizing MAC bypass for a specific device. From Versa Director's Monitor tab, we can actually show the endpoints discovered on the network at a specific site as well as detailed analytics for every session that gets generated capturing user device as well as location information. And then finally, from Versa Analytics, we provide greater visibility uh, with the various different dashboards we actually provide for devices, showing information on the device types and models. And all these the dashboards can actually be drilled down to as well. Versa Analytics provides extensive visibility into branch usages, SLAs, and applications that troubleshoot slow and set the branch. You can check availability through the site. You can check the application performance monitoring dashboard for network response time metrics. You can drill down to the application to see its performance over time. You can verify that the network is the issue by analyzing SLA metrics and plot delay, jitter, and loss to get a better understanding of network conditions. You can then isolate applications and then analyze them for congestion. And you can actually check usage to actually see if bandwidth levels are actually alarming. You can also isolate circuit data. And then you can actually check if there's a specific user hogging bandwidth or check for a pattern amongst all the users at a site. And so with Versa Analytics, you can actually troubleshoot if there is a problem and if it's local to the application, site, or due to network conditions.